So before I start the video, I just wanted to say that I will be uploading these videos every Friday so that I have more time to write for them and make the video longer. On the last episode of What We Know, we talked about Reddit responses along with some things pertaining to a leak, but it wasn't significant enough to warrant a video, so I just tacked it on at the end. So let's go ahead and start the video. So right off the bat, we're going to be starting with the voice auditions that Void Interactive was asking for. We can already get an idea of what's in store with these voices that for sure have the part. So let's take a listen. Hello? Anyone, please? Please? Can anyone hear me? Let me out! Please! I'll do anything! Stop anything. right there, motherfucker! You are under arrest! Put your hands up where I can see them! Put the gun down! I won't say anything, I, s I swear... Just let me go and... Oh, please. I have children. Stop right there, motherfucker. You are under arrest. Put your hands up where I can see them. Put the gun down. There is no getting out Put your out hands of up where I can see them. Put the gun down. There's no getting out of this one. If you don't put the gun down... Charge is set. Breach charge ready. Ready when you are. On my mark. Oh, God. Please. Please. <laughs> Please don't kill me. I have a wife and kids, please. Stop right there, motherfucker. You're under arrest. Put your hands up where I can see them. Put your hands up where I can see them. Put the gun down. There's no getting out of this one. If you don't put the gun down, I'm gonna blow your fucking head off! So as of this video, I believe the voice acting for the hostages and the male SWAT officer have been taken. As of this recording, the only one that's left is the gang member voice audition. But that's not to say that Void Interactive isn't looking for more voice actors. They have a lot of people that are listed under plausible. If you go onto the website right there, it shows the people that are in green that are a shoe-in, whereas people that are in blue are plausible people to come back to. Whereas people that are in red, they may have been rejected, but listen, I've been wrong in the past before, so... I, I don't know, like, I mean, that's what it seems like to me. Might ask the developers and see what they say about that, but, uh, as of right now, this is just how it looks. Moving over to Instagram, we got two new pictures, uh, that actually went up during the stream that I did for the AMA, where they showed off these mouse pads, and I'm like, oh, wow, I could really use these. It'll really replace the ones that I have right now. Damn, that mouse pad, I really need it in my life. So for the rest of the video, it's basically gonna be the AMA, so, uh... I was originally going to put a lot of Reddit responses in here, but unfortunately, this video took way longer than it needed to. Cutting down about four hours of this video took way too long, so I'm just going to save it for uh, next week. So yeah, have fun. When is the next dev blog? Where did my dad go? And the developer replies with, There won't be another dev blog until the gameplay trailer comes out, so gameplay trailer is coming first. Can you tell us a little more about the assets that will be available to deploy, like mentioned, floodlights or negotiators? Damn. Each level will have three types of purchasable things. Entries, deployables, and personnel. Floodlight operators and negotiators are both personnel. Ooh. I'm not sure if that answers your question or not. Would ready or not PvP be an afterthought? Really hope not. And the developer replies with, We will be devoting TLC to all of our game types. Although, obviously, the co-op and single-player are the main meat and draw of the game. Uh, while I'm aware, there are less than lethal weapons, and so far it's possible to try and play less lethal. My one question so far is this. By less lethal implies it is not non-lethal. As in, I'll ask it like this. Is it possible to, by accident or not, kill somebody with less than lethal weapons and munitions? And easiest to replies with yes. Which is something that happened a lot in SWAT 4. Like, it is less lethal, but you can still kill people if you're not careful. When will we see anything new about the game? P.S. Love this project and a shout out to Durag. Oh, shit. Uh, approximately how long will it take us to beat the story? Also, how high will the replayability value be? Also, also, why are you guys such an awesome beast? Hard to estimate how long the game will t uh, take to complete at this point. However, there will be some aspects which lend itself to replayability, like randomized spawn points for enemies, ooh, and hostages, etc. 
Getting a perfect score on all of the missions will be desirable, but a difficult goal. Ooh, cha. Oh, here's another one. Uh, I'm really interested in how personnel will work, i.e. negotiators work as a distraction. What do they do? How do they help? Negotiators will reduce the number of hostages on the map. What? Uh, it's one of the most expen expensive options, ATM. Floodlights reduce suspects' morale uh, of where they are targeted. Those are just two options, but there are more than just that. And then here's another one that says, Will I be able to play as a disabled woman with a prosthetic arm? <laughs> <laughs> oh no as i answered before you won't be you won't be able to play as a woman <laughs> at release oh my god are you on the fence with free look i demand free look and tackler support like an arma or squad and the developer replies with we sat on the fence so long that it broke and free look is now in the game is there a confirmed weapon list? Can suspects use everything available to officers, or do they have their own set they are restricted to? Developer replies with, All of the weapons that we've shown off in the trailers and previews will be weapons that you can use. Can we get an estimate for the release in the next trailer at the end of the month, early next month? We're in full force working towards the big showcase of our game, hopefully in the next month or so, possibly two. No, more than three. Wait, so two months? Three months? Wait, so like not June or July, like the next month after that? Is that what they're trying to say? Okay, so let me read this. We're in full force working towards the big showcase of our game, hopefully in the next month or so. Possibly two. No more than three. So are you talking June? Is that what you're trying to say, June? Oh, fuck. Do I have to read that? Oh, why? So long. So I decided to edit this in post because I didn't feel like reading it when I was on the stream. Hey Void Interactive, first I would like to preface and let you know that I am very excited for the release of Ready or Not and have been following development from the very beginning. In fact, it will probably be on my only full price purchase or even pre-purchase of a game this year. I'm confident I speak for most of everyone else when I say that we trust you to revive the classic feel and intensity of old time tactical shooters like SWAT and Rainbow Six series. Unfortunately, there is not a demand in the market or an interest for developers nowadays to pursue a genre but smaller teams like you guys are a saving grace. I have a couple of questions, but here's the main one. I have been seeing a lot of people on the Discord and subreddit referring to this game as a SWAT simulator. I don't mean to pick a bone over semantics, but it always irks me when I hear people say that. There's a big difference between a genuine simulator, Arma 3, VBS 3, DCS World, etc., all of which I have experience with, and a tactical shooter. While there is always a strong emphasis on realism, gunplay, pacing, movement, and strategy, there are often vital features lacking that would make a tactical shooter, especially ones emphasizing law enforcement, a simulator. As to not get into too much of a ramble, I won't go through all that. However, I will say that Rainbow Six and SWAT 3 were close, though SWAT 4 was lacking compared to its predecessor. Would you refer to your game as a SWAT simulator? Or more so just a tactical shooter done right, relative to old titles that shaped the genre? Additional questions regarding gameplay. It's been stated that co-op will permit up to 8 players. How many operators will we work with on single player? Is it only going to be a mere 4 officers? The player plus similar to SWAT 4. Speaking of that, what can you tell us about the behavior of the teammate AI? Will they clear rooms properly and approach different angles of threat in a realistic manner? One of my issues with SWAT 4 was the poor performance of friendly AI and lack of tactical intelligence. Can you tell us more about the damage and ballistic system? I know that free look has been up in the air, but any news on potentially considering it and maybe even track IR implementation? Can we expect to see first person hands on animations for certain actions such as restraining suspects? securing weapons and evidence, opening doors, etc. I sincerely appreciate the work that you are putting into what is going to be a fantastic game. I can't wait to spend a lot of time on Ron. Thank you. And back to your regularly scheduled video. Say hi. Quite a long question, but hopefully I can hit every part of it. Uh, it's more of a tactical shooter than, SWAT, than a SWAT simulator. Our emphasis on making something enjoyable yet realistic, if that makes sense. Right now, we have four AI plus the player in single player, so five. But this can be increased arbitrarily because of how the engine works. Really? So how many more people can you actually have? Interesting. The damage and ballistic system was covered in a previous dev blog, but I can answer any specific questions you might have about it. See an above response on that. We're experimenting with something like, God damn. Will 
I be able to go naked? No. Will I be able to wear a hat? There we go. That's the most important question of the day, right? Oh, shit. I can't edit that, can I? Oh, I can. Does a helmet count as a hat? No, like a regular police ball cap? And he says no. Damn. Hello, I was wondering if Ready or Not was a PC exclusive game, if you guys were planning on bringing it to consoles as well, thanks. Uh, we will be bringing the game to the PC first and then seeing if it's worth porting to consoles. Yeah, so in order for that game to be successful, it has to be, um, you know, successful on the PC before they actually port it over, which we already knew that from like, you know, a while ago, but... Hey Des, I'd like to ask, how will less than lethal work in the game in SWAT 4 PvP if you get hit by a flashbang, tear gas, beanbag rounds, and many of uh, other less than lethal forces, you get stunned and no way to fight back until the effect is over? I'd like to know, will players be completely stunned as SWAT 4 or will they be able to fight back while stunned with many debuffs, such as slower movement speed, shaky screen, increased recoil from firing weapons, loss of accuracy, etc. Or will they be vulnerable until the Duration of the effects has run out. Would love to know the AI reactions uh, to these effects as well as possible. For now, you experience the screen and audio effects. Your movement is slowed, and you're able to return fire. How you're able? You're able to return fire. Fire. However, we're more than likely going to make changes to <clears throat> to this to disallow firing while under the effect, since these states are when players move into arrest. And it adds to the strategic element which can provide you with a small time frame to think about your next move without being shot at. We have a lot of AI reactions to the stuns, but I'd rather wait to show that part and not tell. What is the current state of the blood and gore system? In progress, gore and feedback is really really big part of our design ethos but we're making big changes in the engine to accommodate for it but it's heavily in progress oh why are you guys so beautiful no sunlight big lifts at the gym and live leak videos <laughs> Maybe we're born it with it. Maybe it's the Maybelline? Players will be able to fold unfold weapon stocks like Escape from Tarkov. Probably not. The main thing is trying to keep the amount of input keys low. One of the things that I didn't like about ETF is the absolute button fest factor of it. I know, right? Like, I've hardly used any of the other ones, but, I, you know, it's, it's there, which I think is cool. Looking at E3... Are there any games that you guys are excited for? Starfield and TES 6, uh, for me personally. I read in the FAQ that there will be a command menu similar to, uh, to the one from SWAT 4. Does it mean we'll be choosing a command in order from top to bottom of the menu, or is it going to be more radio one? It will be a list, not radio. What is this? Have you guys avoid played Soldier of Fortune 2? If so, did the influence the shooting gore system... Also relate to the aftermath after, after engagements, will bodies, shell casings, arrested suspects, etc. stay until the end of the level or will they disappear after a while for optimization? Keep up the good work. Yes, we have played SOF 2 and love the gore system. The amount of shell casings will be configurable in the options menu. Bodies and arrested suspects will not disappear though in current configuration. Hello, I'm really digging the game and enjoy the debut trailer. One thing I wanted uh, to know is whether the recent rash of school shootings in the US has made the team rethink the inclusion of certain scenario levels on Ron, such as the apparent school section that the, that was teased in the debut trailer. Obviously as developers, you are open to artistic freedom and the such, but as fear of potential backlash made the team rethink what to include in the game, no, in fact, it's made us more eager to approach these topics. Backlash, smacklash? Hi, Gunter. Hi, you Easy Streets. Hi, Ron Team. Heart. My PC specs are quite low. 1 Gen i7 Core GTX 560 Ti, 12 Go of RAM. What are the minimum requirements do you think that my configuration meets? The minimum requirements for a decent frame rate and resolution, 30 to 45 FPS at 1080p. Thanks. I was able to run the game on lower specs than that. You should be fine if that low. Can we eat captured suspect ass? Unfortunately, you will not be able to do prone, so no. <laughs> what? <laughs> will there be animals like 
German Shepherds. Shepherds? Yes. Since your recent work with swap mods, how has it been assisting the developers in this game? Is there anything in particular different or difficult about EU4 engine? Uh, while the core engine is vastly different, some stuff transfers over nicely. It was hard to start to get started, but I've caught on pretty well. Some of the stuff is that's different. Blueprints, these are new to e UE4 and are essentially the unreal script of UE2. Native code, it exists in UE2 but it was never used. The code base uh, I have to learn about how Ready or Not's code base works and it's a fair bit different from SWAT 4. That doesn't mean that working with SWAT hasn't helped me though. In particular it gave some ideas on how to pursue specific systems and patch up the shortcomings of Irrational co Irrational's code. There's also stuff which is identical to both engines. Replication, the OOP focus, config stuff. I can probably give more detailed response when I'm not pressured to answer everyone else's questions though. Controlled manually or auto like swap 4 automatically. Different ammo types available. Will 9mm hollow points be an option versus the 9mm penetration rounds? Will you have the option to use slugs or buckshot? <clears throat> Asked because the escape in Escape from Tarkov, the ammo type you use can also be very influential. Inf Influential. Say that right on PvP success. Absolutely. Currently, there are only two options: JHP and FMJ. But we're looking at others too, such as jacketed soft point for the future. No rip rounds, though. Apparently, they're trash. Serious question now. You said that you can't play as the bad guy. So does that imply that we will not be a civilian targets in PvP mode, or that goal is to be the team that saves the hostages, or will one team be defending, taking hostages, and the other? rescuing. Also, if a hostage or player has shot multiple times but survives, what level of medical care will need to be administered? Will there be a non-fatal injuries that take a player out of the game for the rest of the round or will everyone be able to get right back into combat? And a non-gameplay question, how cohesive would you say your team is? Have you guys been accomplishing the goals you wanted? It came as a surprise to me and I would assume others that the game will be released in November if you don't wish to answer about this, it's understandable. Currently, there are no plans for civilians in PvP. We're not looking at medical care right now as it adds clutter to an otherwise smooth experience. I love our team and I'm not just saying that because I have to. We've managed to secure a bunch of guys passionate about working on Ready or Not, but also eager to discover and learn new things. This game really could not have been possible with any other configuration of people. Wait, what? What are you guys implementing to make Ron an immersive experience? I'm ta I'm talking things like starting in a truck and rolling out, hand signals, realistic audio, etc. The plan is that some entry types will see you use animations specific to that entry at the start, e.g. starting in a truck, helicopter, etc. But some won't. It just depends on where you start. Can okay, we expect different types of brands and different gear? For example, the both Baz Gat and Ops Corps uh, high-cut ballistic helmets have been shown but will we see the cry precision airframe and mitch ac 2001 helmets as well or the cry cpc that has been shown in promotional material will we have multiple plate carrier options like the jpc or 6094 currently our focus on plate carrier and helmet customization doesn't exist however due to the nature of our system it wouldn't be difficult to add the ability to sec to select and customize your officer with different items at some point in the future what are the differences between the two round multiplayers uh difficult balances all of the weapons are shown up in the trailers and the weapons you can use if there are two teams in a co-op match will they start on different sides of the maps like SWAT or the team leader can pick where each spawn team spawns at they can either spawn together or apart will that be ragdoll system or just animation ragdoll transitions edit when someone dies a lot of our animations are a mix of active or slightly rigid is a better term ragdoll and root motion if you shoot a guy enough they'll just go into a ragdoll though so it's changed since that video with the suspect being shot in the throat with the beretta Ready or not looks like a game made by visual artists in a good way. Can you tell us about your inspirational sources? 
Thanks. A uh, lot of film noir, where you get the nice contrast between the blacks and the whites accentuated by a nice rim light. We've been feeding more and more color into our images as we get closer to the releases, and in a way, our inspiration is shifting towards other works with other color as well. I've been getting into Dennis, Dennis, Ve what the hell? Dennis Vages, like Gutierrez and Nick Joseph. Lately, also hopefully that drives some future works. Will Kanye West be playing? Ye. I'm intrigued by Starfield as well, as by most uh, space-oriented titles, titles, Alien, Isol Isolation, and Elite Dangerous are my faves. The Last of Us Part 2 and Dying Light for sure. Ask if any of the scenarios will, be in will involve children actually getting hurt. Okay. This is a question about AI. Will we be able to estimate how enemies react to things like being gassed or pepper sprayed? Uh, for an example, depending on their mental state, they might surrender immediately, retreat, attack, start shooting wildly, etc. Will their behavior give us some clues to their morale and mental state? Also, keep up the good work, folks. Can't wait for the game. AI behavior will definitely be represented in their lines and the way they move. Hi, you Gunter. Three questions. I hope you can answer them for me. Thank you. Number one, will there be CSGO like spectator mode for online gameplay to see how you got killed? Number two, will there be any third party software battle line protecting the game from cheaters? Number three, will there be collector's edition available? Thank you, and I hope this game will be one of the ones I've been missing for since SWAT 4. And the developer replies with number one, at the time there's a spectate teammates, uh, we'll look into to a kill cam. Number two, yup, battle line or EAC currently in progress. Number three, possibly. There will be a few additions, but we're just weighing up whether or not it's a good idea to go physical. Who is the coolest? Best Swedish person you know. Love you, Nick. As a huge audio f file? Is that how you spell file? Audio file? How did you guys come about creating a viciously accurate sounds and indoor gunfire? The only thing missing is the shaky vision and tinnitus? Uh, tinnitus? Tinnitus of yarn wearing here in protection. Are there going to be dynamic ranges for gunshots based on how enclosed your firing space is? Or are you guys going to, are you guys going the easy route and just making two separate sounds environment, indoor, outdoor? Currently, it's two separate sounds in environment indoors and outdoors however there is nothing i'd love more than expanding on this and creating a really really deep sound system for gunshots will headshots be fatal will shots that hit the head be at a very slight angle even without a helmet simply bounce off the skull or will helmets be the only chance of surviving a bullet to the head some headshots will be survivable but don't expect to go head to head with a 762 uh times 54 r and survive it ready or not i'm looking forward to this game a lot uh will be possible to add AI to a co-op game, uh, not as enemy but as friendly focus forces, uh, to fill the rest of the slots and squad or even as each player control blue red teams in case of two player in a co-op match. I play SWAT 4 a lot with my girlfriend, but sometimes just two of us against a lot of AIs gets too difficult. Developer replies with, it's actually something we've reconsidered based on feedback over our Facebook, Reddit, etc. It's likely that we're going to add AI wingmanning in co-op. Was there a specific reason not allowing the option to prone? In single player, going prone would probably be bad, since it's not often that the entry team would be going prone unless something went horribly wrong. Wrong. In multiplayer, prone is associated with camping, and that's not something you want to encourage. Can you hand ammunition and items to the teammates? Number one, can you hand ammunition and items to teammates? Number two, are you using a realistic sound engine, e.g. Steam Audio? Number three, VR support. Number four, can I get a test access right now? I'm willing to sign an NDA. Uh, number five, why haven't you hired me yet, gameplay programmer? Uh, number one, ammunition, ammunition is isolated to your own officer for now. Two, we're using Steam Audio, yes. Number three, not on release. Ron is quite a demanding experience and dedicating time to a VR implementation might be mismanagement of finances right now. Number four, no. Number five, email us. If you have, we'll see it eventually and shoot back with a reply. Will there be any chemical weapons? If so, will there be gas masks for their use? Also, how many mechanics? Uh, also, how many mechanics will be associated with said gas mask? As you can tell, I love gas masks, and my favorite gas masks 
game mechanic of all time had to have been in the Metro games. A dev responds with chemical weapons and OC ball. If so, then yes. You'll be able to use squad points to purchase a gas team who can pump CS into a room, into some rooms, similar to Wacko. Wacko? What the frack is that? Similar to Wacko without the fiery death. As a player with a shotgun will be able to carry a lethal and non-lethal shells for it. Uh, if so, can he quick swap, unload, or only load one or two shells in it? Will there be transparent magazines, P mags, with a little window to see the remaining rounds in the magazine? Can we add more than one patch to the shoulder vest of our officer, name tag, flag, class, symbol? No swapping shotgun rounds currently. This is purely from a gameplay standpoint, so you can't be a one man army. Initially, we allowed this, but it actually harmed the gameplay. Might change though. You won't be able to swap weapons between LTL and lethal regardless. Different weapons configurations. Might be transparent mags at some point, but UE4 has a terrible way of handling that sort of stuff. Currently, only one, but it's pretty neat. I but it's a pretty neat idea to allow two of Oh my god, I can't fucking read for the shit for the life of me. Currently only one, but it's a pretty neat idea to allow two different ones the ama is over they just concluded thank god okay anything else anything else anything else i don't have a question just wanted to say thank you thank you too uh regarding the ready or not devs any melee weapons that's understandable but my question is if you run out of ammo how will you be able to defend yourself isn't the idea of a melee button is that you have the emergency weapon in case you run out of ammo isn't that the reason why the sketched out syndicate and expansion of the swap 4 added punch a punch button to begin with? We won't allow players to rocket their way through the game. Haha, <laughs> the punch was primarily to beat non-compliant targets to submission, I believe. However, we'll allow players to use squad points to purchase a rearm and possibly a lot more mags. Uh, can you tell us the few maps? We, we got a taste of some of them in the trailer, but can you tell us what some of the other maps will be? Uh, we're exploring a lot of different environments. We're thinking about a car dealership. Interesting. A nitpick, but can you guys make sure we can fully disable mouse acceleration and mouse sm smoothing in the game? Unreal 3 games have been iffy with this, making users edit config files to disable this stuff, even though it's checked off in options. And some Unreal 4 games have no way of enable raw mouse input easy street replies with we don't have mouse acceleration or smoothing what sort of soundtrack could we expect to hear classical like the bach used in the trailer or maybe more of an electric beat like in swap 4 will there be music that plays on the queue in game when other, when action starts orchestral well that didn't answer the second question will there be a p90 at some point. How is suppression going to affect AI or even player? It will be purely an audio visual thing. We don't believe in hampering the player's skills based on suppression. Will I be able to get that mouse pad in the Instagram photo? Yes. <gasps> what are the lowest specs that you uh, what are the lowest specs you ran the game on? Yeah, my PC is crap. I ran the editor, not just the game, but the editor as well as the game. On an AMD Phenom and Radeon HD 6900 series video card with a 1TB HDD and 16GB of RAM. I had to run it on low settings but for 10 but for a 10 year old machine and some currently unoptimized assets, that's not bad I suppose. I've since dropped about 1400 on a new machine. What would you most likely showcase uh, that we haven't mu uh, much heard about much? There is so much stuff that we would like to showcase that I probably don't have enough time to list all of off of it. Any details about of how does Riot Shields work in Ron? It's a deployable, it's a deployable item that you can purchase at the beginning of the mission. You can pick it up and drop it at will. Generally the shield bearer is both a role that you can kinda want to be, but you also kinda don't want to be. You can definitely feel the weight of using it, but it's very terrifying and loud when the bullet hits, as it should be. Uh, will there be a unique events during each mission playthrough? For example, I'd like to I'd like to use 
is a cultist mission, specifically the Tyrone tenement from one of the SWAT 4. Uh, would you be able to approach a building and find them all praying to Tyrone cultist leader or doing a weird ritual? Would you enter and hear the cultist leader giving a sermon or them sacrificing a member to an animal or an animal within a sacrifice room uh, that will be hidden if the sacrifice event chance is too low? Or simply, will there be multiple unique events in each mission that will have random random chance of occurring in each playthrough. Another thing I'd like to know is where will you guys be having each mission have a random time setting e.g. instead of some maps being restricted to day only vision or night only versions. Will all maps have random possibility of occurring in different times of the day or even different seasons or weather? I'd love to start the new campaign just to see, oh hey, it's Christmas and this time during the mission or Halloween this time around, huh? And it's raining too. Uh, that would be a great touch that adds a plenty of variety for multiple playthroughs. Yes, we have some ideas for something like this. Not extensively. Uh, the most variation in the time will be between dusk and night, uh, etc. Not anything that changes the overall feel to the mission or wouldn't make sense. Otherwise, in the scope of the mission, let's go shooting would take place at night. Some missions will have weather, and we have scripted the ability to alter weather during the course of a mission. Uh, you're probably not allowed to say it. Wait, you're probably not allowed to say, but will the next trailer feature a showcase of the gameplay? Really excited to see the game in action, as I am a huge fan of SWAT and the old SoCal games holy shit i haven't played a socom game since the fucking psp days like holy cow yes will the beta be available immediately upon pre-ordering in july or will we have to wait a bit longer there will be some time between the pre-orders starting and the beta being available what language will be available are you looking for someone to translate the game english audio different translations for text We'll reach out later on that. How many maps are present in the game? And are you guys going to use Ubisoft's system of having seasons every few months with new content? I can't comment specifically on the map pool in case we increase decrease by one or two. However, we plan to expand on Ron a lot past its initial release point. Very unsure about a season pass. It's almost like a second pre-order and I don't know if we want to allow that just yet. Maybe it's too late but I'm very interested on how you about how you do work on the AI. Do you have <clears throat> do you assume that your AI is better than other games? How did you do this? Can you tell us uh, the innovations that you make that make you pr pride of? Proud of? Uh, how does daily work on AI look like? I wish you the best guys. We're huge fans of developing a smart AI system that'll react to players' interaction with the world with the world. I still think some of the best stuff our AI does I see and hear accurately, entirely based on where we're looking and how loud our player is. It's not something new to games, but it adds a lot. It still catches me for a loop when an AI reacts to rolling or moving to cover closets to them as opposite opposed as opposed to running to some strange predetermined cover spots a few meters away i made a post i made a post on this but my question is how tightly the swat will be able to shoot without having to use their sights most counterterrorism swat teams are trained to shoot within extinct and not sites for the sakes of speed and will the SWAT be using quick draw techniques for the secondary such as shooting while still drawing the pistol to a standard hold there's a cone of fire that affects your players hip aim based on movement but it's entirely possible to make accurate hits while the move though definitely way more difficult than if you were to aim and shoot this is for the sake of slowing down the gameplay some people may disagree and call it artificial which in some way it is but it's a throwback to the classics that we really liked but know that it isn't nearly as intense as it was in SWAT 4 where a little bit of a forward movement would cause your bullets to go completely off screen almost also yes to the quick draw all of our animation speeds are modeled off of the motion capture video also we're trying to be as accurate as possible in that regard the AMA has concluded now. Thank you all for your questions.